that we have a shape, we might want to change the way that our shape appears on screen. We might not want our shape to be fully white all the time. We might want it to have a line. We might want just to see certain points. So how it's drawn on screen. We can send the square a message to change the way it's drawn. So if I go to put message and send it the draw point message connected to my draw square Apple E on a Mac Control E on a PC to edit to turn to play mode click the draw point we'll see now that we're only seeing the four points of the square if I want to see just a line to be drawn, I can send it the draw line message. So control 2 for a message or Apple 2. Draw line connected to the square. Apple or control E to change to play mode. Click and now we see that a draw line is that's how the square is drawn. If I send it the draw fill message, fill the whole square is filled in. Go back to play mode, Apple Control E, draw fill, my square is drawn as a fill. If I want to change the width of my line, so how thick or thin the line is drawn, I can send it the width $1 message. So we haven't come across the $1 message yet. Control 2 for message, width. Type my dollar sign on my keyboard and 1. Um, what the dollar sign 1 is, it says, dollar goes, I'm going to receive a variable, which means I'm going to s receive a number, a bit of information. Hold this number and send it to square. But it allows me to not have to set whatever the number is. So it's called a variable, and I can send it a number. So I'll send it a message or a number here. And... If I go to play mode, I'll say draw line, and then I'll go up here and I'll change the width of the line. So this number five is being sent to the dollar sign. So it's going width, the dollar is accepting number five, dollar one, and it's changing the thickness of the line to five. It's now changing the thickness of the line to 18. So this dollar variable is really important and we'll be using it again and again for different jobs throughout. Um, but you can see here we've learned the different draw messages, draw line, draw point, draw fill, and then the width. So the width works with the draw line. Draw line and I can change the width. And then we've first time come across the dollar one. Um, there's other things I can do to my square um, because at the moment we might not want the square to stay flat facing me. I might want it to change where the square is on screen. So to do this, I can send it the translate message which changes the position of the square, square on screen. So I'll unconnect my gem head to my square I'll put, sorry, it's the translate object, translate, um, and then we add x, y, z, so we can translate it by x, y, and z coordinates. Um, I'll connect it here. Then, to actually change it dynamically, I'll put a number box. Change to play mode. 
and we can see now in play mode that I'm moving it along the ax axis. So in gem, the center point is zero, zero. Um, just this is taken from geometry. If you remember your leaving cert geometry, um, I know sometimes I get a bit rusty. Um, and this is going to move it on the y axis up and down. And then if I add a third number box, it will move it on the Z axis. So that will move it near or far away. Go back to play mode, Apple or Control E. And we can see that my box seems to be getting smaller or bigger, but it's just getting nearer or further away. So zero, zero, zero is just, say, center normal. If I move it up on the z-axis, it will eventually disappear because it goes past us. And we can move it up and down this way. The other really important um, thing to learn in this tutorial is we know that gem processes from top down. So when the gem head is connected to the translate object, so we translate the square and translate tells the square where to go. Um, and anything that goes into one of these inlets goes straight out the outlet, in here and straight out. And these are called hot inlets and these are at the left of every object because they go straight down and out and are processed to the next object. Any other inlet in an object is called a cold inlet because it goes in this inlet and it stays here until the hot inlet receives something. Um, it becomes really important later on when we're working, but just to introduce the idea of hot inlets which are immediate, immediate and cold inlets where this affects well this object only here.